Is healing the hardest role in PvP? Apparently, a lot of people think so. Even Blizzard seems to agree. And at this point, they're going to hand out Spectral Tigers in special healer boxes just for pressing Q. Anyway, today we will rank every healer from easiest to hardest based on skill floors. We will start with Restoration Druid, a spec that can actually be challenging for new players. If you look on Reddit, people will tell you that Resto is hard and we don't really agree. But before anyone gets confused, let's be clear. Skill floors represent the difficulty of learning the foundation of a spec, nothing too fancy. For healers, a low skill floor means having a simple rotation with strong instant reactive heals combined with powerful reactive cooldowns and a fairly passive playstyle. If a healer can check all of those boxes, it's going to be on the easier side. Of course, being S tier or OP will slightly influence our rankings. But what we want to make clear is that fundamentals really do carry in Arena. The number one reason players get stuck is because they're making small, fixable mistakes without even realizing it. That's why at Skillcapped, our healing courses start with teaching the foundation of every spec, since we know from over 10 years of experience that this is what truly carries. Seriously, you could be missing out on a ton of healing if you aren't sticking to some healing goals or if you don't know the burst healing combos needed to deal with the insane damage you see at higher ratings. Skill capped allows you to speed run the learning process and get ahead of the competition faster than everyone else. So much so that we guarantee you will gain at least 400 rating while actively using our service. So join us today using the exclusive discount link in the description below. For now, let's get back to the video. To me, learning the Resto Druid rotation is like learning to play a song. Instead of hitting notes, you need to press every heal in the right order to constantly keep up with the rhythm of the game. But the truth is, you're kind of playing the same song over and over. People think Druid is hard because in order to actually heal, you need to be keeping up with tempo and planning your globals well in advance. Some healers, like Holy Priest, press big heals after the target has taken big damage. This is what we call reactive healing because the healing always happens after the damage. Resto Druid is the exact opposite. Instead of reacting to big damage, you're constantly preparing for it, pressing smaller globals far in advance, and ordering does make a difference. This is necessary because of mastery, which as a Resto Druid increases your healing done to the target based on the number of hots they have. So if you slip up and let hots constantly fall off, you're losing a ton of momentum. On the bright side, virtually all of Resto Druid healing comes from instant spells. Life Bloom, Rejuvenation, and Grove Guardians will always be at the top of healing breakdowns. Treant healing is now even stronger thanks to the Keeper of the Grove hero tree, which is definitely the easier option between the two. With that said, Keeper of the Grove definitely has a bit of depth with tons of potential to min-max, which you can learn about in our healing course. Moving on to Druid cooldowns, Incarnation is a very strong and reliable ability in Solo Shuffle, which can simply be pressed on cooldown at both the start and end of each round, pretty much guaranteeing that nobody dies while it's up. It's not really a cooldown worth overthinking. When it comes to playstyle, Resto Druid is one of the most passive healers, at least in Solo Shuffle. I know some people out there will say that you have to clone all game, but that's not really true. Resto Druid continues to have some of the best single target healing if you manage your hots well, which means you can simply simply win most lobbies by just being more efficient than the enemy healer. Of course, offensive play is possible and sometimes really good, but as a beginner, you really don't need to do anything fancy as a druid. Just focus on maximizing HPS and using tree form on cooldown and trading other cooldowns at sensible times. So with a mix of scores across the board, Resto Druid will be the first healer going into the medium difficulty tier. Next up is every Resto Druid sworn enemy, Preservation Evoker. During its debut in Dragonflight, Evoker was conceptually considered a difficult healer, between having a limited range on spells and even skill shots. During Dragonflight Alpha, the game even gave you a little warning that said Evoker was an advanced class. Two years later, an Evoker is still one of the more challenging healers, despite the fact that it is insanely strong. Just like Resto Druid, some of the difficulty of Evoker stems from the fact that there is a lot of maintenance involved and a ton of decisions to be made. Between managing essence, keeping up reversion, and planning how and when to budget your empowered spells, Evoker healing is less straightforward than many people think and definitely easy to mess up. Prez healing is very min-maxi, trying to squeeze as much value out of things like Golden Hour and Stasis Ramping. In fact, a lot of Evoker burst healing is tied into very specific spell sequences, which if done correctly can contribute a ton of healing. But healing alone isn't really what makes Evoker challenging to play for beginners. The true difficulty curve is adapting to the playstyle Evoker is best suited for, where in order to start playing to its true potential, you really need to strike a balance between offensive and defensive play. 
Due to their limited healing range, evokers naturally have to stay pushed into most fights, and even more, they need to try really hard and offensively pressure the enemy team. You know that saying, the best defense is good offense? That's basically the TLDR preservation evoker. You always have the ability to deal meaningful damage, which, if done consistently, almost turns Prez into a support spec, making it fundamentally different than any other healer. It's no accident that Scouring Flame is at least considered a soft block PvP talent, with the ability to AoE purge multiple buffs every fire breath, while also pumping out the highest damage out of any healer, focusing only on healing is like playing half of your spec, and knowing how to balance all of your commitments can feel quite overwhelming. And even though Evoker has a lot of cooldowns, they're still a bit weird. Stasis, for instance, completely plays off of preemptive play, storing three spells to be used later. A convenient button to press in the early game when everything is ready, but a bit awkward to press later when everything is disjointed. Time dilation is a bit weird too, since it looks like a damage reduction cooldown on its surface, but doesn't actually reduce damage at all, instead staggering it over time. Again though, we want to stress the fact that even though Evoker might be one of the most dominant healers in the meta, it's not exactly obvious to new players how to take on all of the commitments that make it an S tier healer. So as a conceptually backwards healer that happens to be super strong, Evoker will be going into the hardest tier. Next up is Mistweaver Monk, who have historically been one of the more challenging healers to play, especially in solo shuffle. Unfortunately, what's made Mistweaver so hard in the past is what will continue to make it hard in the War Within. The core problem is not how much healing a monk can do, but how they actually heal. On one hand, enveloping mists is such a vital source of healing, offering a strong heal over time and even buffing other heals by 30%, but with one huge drawback, its duration. Unlike Resto Druids, who can easily apply and then extend every hot for well over their base duration, enveloping mists lasts so short that it is very prone to falling off, which makes CC incredibly punishing for any monk. If you tank a single polymorph, all of your hots can fall off while you sit there scrambling to think of ways to recover. Adding to this problem is the fact that Monk continues to rely so heavily on Soothing Mists and is one of the only healers that needs to regularly plant their feet and channel a heal in order to maximize output. Mistweaver is also a healing spec with a multi-global ramp. To be efficient, you need to be playing around Zen Spheres and Chi Harmony, which means burning at least two globals before doing any significant healing. Enveloping Mists were recently buffed and is no longer dispellable, which is definitely a positive but doesn't really help the fact that Mistweaver still gets incredibly punished by CC. And if all this wasn't enough, some monk CDs were hit with the nerf bat in the War Within. Revival only dispels a maximum of three debuffs, making it significantly weaker into meta-dominant specs like Affliction Warlocks and Ellie Shamans. With all their structural problems, we can't really justify having monk on anything less than the hard tier for the time being. Holy Paladin, on the other hand, has always been considered a beginner-friendly healer, and this is a trend that will definitely continue in the War Within. First up, healing. Just like Retribution, Paladin has a pretty streamlined builder-spender system, which is conveniently built around instant cast spells. Holy Shock, which now, thanks to the Herald of the Sun Tree, can randomly get buffed to heal for three times as much and even duplicate to heal a second time. And then Word of Glory, which again, thanks to Herald of the Sun, is now even stronger, having a healing over time effect passively baked in and healing more on the Paladin themselves. Pally's also picked up some new tech from the Herald Tree, whose signature mechanic is Dawn Light, which procs from Barrier of Faith and ramps up the healing of the next two Word of Glory casts. If you've been keeping score so far, everything has been instant cast. Rotationally, Paladins are pretty straightforward. The decision trees that other healers need to navigate aren't really a thing for Paladins. You either build or spend, not too complicated. Paladin cooldowns are also pretty straightforward too. Of course, there is some skill expression involved with an ability like Blessing of Sacrifice, but remember, these rankings are only about skill floors. Sack is a pretty straightforward damage reduction cooldown, and in many cases, it doesn't need to be fancy, nor does Bop, Bubble, or Mastery, you name it. On the playstyle side, Paladins might actually be a bit more challenging than before. Towards the end of Dragonflight, it was fairly common for Pallies to stand back and play passively around their tier's deliverance windows, but that might be changing. As now, in the War Within, there could be more incentive to actually press W more often and play aggressive, which could wind up making the spec a bit more complicated to play. But foundationally, Paladin continues to be very vanilla, and there is a reason why it's commonly suggested as a good healer for new players. Moving on to our first Priest spec, Discipline is looking quite strong going into the War Within. Some of its strength comes from the fact that Disc is now even easier to play, assuming you're playing the new Oracle Hero spec. 
Oracle not only makes Disk more passive to play, but also grants an entirely new cooldown, or should we say four entirely new cooldowns through Premonition, but more on that later. Historically, the main difficulty when playing Disk in Solo Shuffle stems from the fact that it is a tempo-based healer, which means you need to constantly stay ahead. It's like a snowball effect. If you can keep momentum, that's great, but the moment you fall behind, you're kind of screwed. Disc doesn't really have many punchy instant cast healing recovery options, but instead needs to rely on slowly ramping with power word shield modifiers while maintaining dots on enemy targets. Fortunately, Disc Priest healing has gotten slightly easier as Blizzard gave massive buffs to power word shield going into the War Within which even includes shiny new passives on the Oracle Tree itself, increasing its absorption and even causing every cast to automatically apply Prayer of Mending. Part of the learning curve when playing Disc now in the War Within is then making use out of all of the other modifiers that buff Power Word Shield, which again involves a bit of ramping to min-max. Talents like Wheel and Woe and Harsh Discipline represent the skill floor of healing as a Disc Priest in 2024. If you're not using Radiance, Penance, and Shield in the right order, you are missing out on a ton of healing. Oracle also provides an entirely new set of cooldowns through Premonition, and even buffs Pain Suppression, which continues to have two charges in the War Within. And thanks to the fact that Oracle Disc Priest is better optimized for maximizing healing output, Disciplined Priest can adopt a more passive playstyle, making it easier than before to adopt to the chaos of Solo Shuffle. Now, before you get too excited and rush to make a Disc Priest for the first time, we really need to reiterate the main learning curve of this spec. Unlike Holy Paladin, Disc is more of a preemptive tempo-based healer, which is a really difficult concept to grasp for newer players. The spec isn't really too optimized for reacting to big damage after it has happened, but instead finding ways to pad and mitigate damage before it happens, specifically by ramping up Penance and Power Word Shield with a bunch of modifiers. This turns Disc into something conceptually different than what most people think of as a traditional healer. So despite having a more streamlined rotation, better CDs, and a more passive playstyle, Disc will remain a fairly difficult healer in the War Within. Holy Priest is up next, and here things get a bit tricky. That's because when Holy Priest is tuned properly and is on the A or S tier, it's definitely a contender for being very easy. The reason is that rotationally, Holy Priest is super straightforward. On the maintenance side, all you need to do is press Prayer of Mending on cooldown. Yeah, that's it. If you're playing Benediction, Palm will sometimes press Renew for you, and if you're playing Oracle, Palm will now even automatically shield the target. As long as you're pressing Prayer of Mending, often you're basically doing all of your healing maintenance automatically. Oh, also, you need to put your Light Well down too, which technically counts as maintenance, I guess? When it comes to spot healing, Holy Priest is also pretty easy, at least on paper. The combination of Serenity, Surge of Light procs, and Power Word Life, which by the way can now be used on targets below 50%, together give Holy Priest a ton of strong instant cast heals, cutting down on a key difficulty some healers face. All of these heals are also entirely reactive. So if we're to look at our original criteria, Holy Priest definitely checks the box for having a simple rotation with strong reactive heals, which is the most important part of being an easy healer. Some Holy Priest cooldowns are a bit straightforward too. In Solo Shuffle, Angel Form is pretty much a throwaway cooldown every opener. Most healers have a button like this where you just press it without thinking in order to not fall behind. Guardian is also pretty straightforward too, at least once you start treating it like a tempo cooldown instead of an oh shit button. Things can get a bit tricky with Premonition, as there are a few micro decisions you need to make, which we conveniently cover in an entire 9 minute video on our website. Then as far as playstyle is concerned, Holy Priest sort of teeters on the line between passive and aggressive. Unlike Disc Priest, however, Holy is more aggressive with CC rather than damage, but is still able to pack a punch. As with any healer, striking a balance between offensive and defensive play is a crucial learning curve. But at the end of the day, the simplicity of the Holy Priest rotation is what truly carries, and despite not being the strongest healer right now, Holy is definitely deserving of an easy ranking. Our final healer is one that is commonly misunderstood from the outside. Most people will open up details and see Riptide, Earth Shield, and Healing Stream Totem near the top thinking, wow, Resto Shaman is easy. Just look at a Resto Shaman playing for a few seconds and you'll quickly realize that virtually all of their heals are instant. And now, thanks to the Farseer Hero Tree, Shamans have NS on a 30 second cooldown. You heard that right, NS every 30 seconds. This can be a bit deceiving though, because what truly allows Resto Shamans to keep their teammates alive is not related to healing at all. The Shaman class itself has by far the most options to be disruptive. 
whether it's wind shearing a cast, grounding CC, knocking someone off a bridge, rooting melee, or tossing an entire team with static field totem, there are a lot of tools to prevent damage from happening in the first place. Those instant heals are only half of the equation, and in order to actually keep health bars stable, resto shamans need to be proficient multitaskers, refreshing riptide while shearing a cast, all in the same global. Resto Shamans are also, unfortunately, one of those specs that gets a bit owned by weak auras, or even a lack thereof. People these days are just really good at sniping healing stream totems instantly, or even better, hunting down a healing tide like they're the Terminator. To make matters worse, one of the main Resto Shaman cooldowns continues to suffer a massive problem, where people seem to have no idea how Earthen Wall Totem works and why they should be standing in it. With all that said, The War Within has offered Resto Shamans a few improvements to help cover some weaknesses. Spirit Link Totem, for instance, will now automatically heal on top of redistributing HP, which will make it easier to use in high-pressure situations. The Shaman class itself has even picked up an entirely new defensive cooldown, and even though the spec is less susceptible to getting trained these days, this is definitely a massive quality of life improvement. Anyway, with a balance of a very easy rotation combined with some harder disruption commitments, Resto Shaman will be going on the medium tier. Are you excited about The War Within? We definitely are because we've spent the last three months working side by side with the best players in the game to craft brand new healing courses for The War Within, allowing you to skip the entire learning process while everyone else is lagging behind. We've even leveled up our revolutionary add-on with brand new updates for The War Within, which can set up your UI in a matter of seconds. So to get started with everything you need in the new expansion, be sure to check out the exclusive offer below and learn how you can gain 400 rating risk-free. For now, that wraps it up for this one. Good luck in the war within. See you soon.